Hello and welcome back to the lecture on applied econometry. So, in this lecture we are going to talk about autocorrelation and in that context we explain Darwin Watson statistic and how it helps us to identify positive and negative autocorrelation. Now, one thing I really did not explain and I think that is important is the relationship between Darwin Watson statistic and gamma relationship. Now, we kind of simply said that the relationship looks like this the dw star is equal to something close to 2 into 1 minus gamma, right? But I haven't really explained it and I said something like almost equal to, but I didn't say why it is almost equal to. So, let me actually explain that. So, this is just a small video to just for that explanation. So, let's again go back to the Darwin Watson statistic formula and it is, it is t is equal to 2 to t and we know why it is 2 and we have u t minus u t minus 1 whole square, right? Whereas in the denominator, I have something like, something like t is equal to 1 to t and I have u t hat square, right? Now, let us just expand the term on the numerator. We can definitely do that will be t is equal to 2 to t. We have u t hat square minus 2 into u t hat u t minus 1 hat plus u t minus 1 hat square. And in the denominator, since I have u t hat for all of this, u t hat square for all of these terms, I can actually write down t is equal to 1 to t u t hat square. Here also I can write t is equal to 1 to t u t hat square. And oh, sorry, I forgot to give this summation sign here. And in all these cases, of course, in the numerator, t is equal to 2 to t t is equal to 2 to t and in the denominator is t is equal to 1 to t. At the denominator, I am going to have t is equal to 1 to t u t hat whole square, square. So, now something to look at here in numerator and denominator, the terms are pretty close for let us say this, this term. Only thing that is different is t is equal to 1 to t and in the numerator is t is equal to 2 to t. Now, if we have sufficiently large number of observations, so this observ this difference t is equal to 1 to t and t is equal to 2 to t won't really matter. But if I have a very small number of observation, well then in that case it might matter. Now let's say, let's say they are almost pretty close to, you know, they are pretty same and then I can write this value for this term is equal to 1 if they are pretty close. Similarly, for this one also, u t minus 1 and u t, if I take the same logic here, I can predict sort of approximate it to 1, okay. Whereas for the th same, the term in the middle, I will have this u t and u t minus 1 and in the denominator, I have some sort of like the steps, basically the variance of u t, okay. Now, it actually will convert into covariance, uh, cor sorry, correlation, the numerator will convert into some sort of covariance and the whole term will look like the correlation coefficient, which is essentially the gamma here, which is essentially the gamma here. So, I can actually write down this equation, simplify as 1 minus 2 gamma minus 1. So, there, that is why I write approximately equal, they are not exactly equal because of the approximations I have done here, this t is equal to 2, t is equal to 1 all on, for all these terms. So, that is why I write it approximately equal. So, this is approximately equal to essentially 2 minus 2 into gamma or essentially 2 into 1 minus gamma, right? This is essentially what we get from here. So, that is what essentially our Darwin Watson statistic and that is the relationship that we have used when we talked about Darwin Watson statistic and the correlation coefficient for you know whenever you try to understand positive or negative autocorrelation. Thank you. So that is the small teaser video on the Darwin Watson statistic and gamma relationship. Thank you.